In this video, I show you how grids can create dramatic lighting effects in a small home studio. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. And today I'm back in the studio doing more home studio photography. And we're going to look at these things, grids. Now, if you've never used a grid before, these are fantastic light modifiers, particularly when you're shooting in a small home studio where controlling the light can be that much more tricky. So here I've got the streak light, my flashpoint light, but you can get grids both for uh, standard studio lights and even speed lights as well. If you want to find out more about grids, of course, don't forget to check out the Adorama Learning Center where there's bags more information. Okay, so at the moment I've got nothing more than the standard reflector. It's just an empty reflector. So I'll take a picture and we'll see how that illuminates the wall behind us. As you can see, we get a great illumination with a fairly even spread, but it does drop off slightly towards the edges. Now, let's modify things by adding in the grid that fits inside the standard reflector on the Streaklight 360. And it is, it's a little dinky little grid, it's really cute, but it's also a great fit. So that goes in there like so. We'll point that back at the wall, and we'll take exactly the same shot again and have a look at the difference. Now the area of illumination is much, much smaller. It's lovely and bright in the center and then it drops off really quickly at the edges. So knowing how a grid works allows you to get very creative with your lighting. And we're gonna do a shoot right now where that grid is gonna come in very handy indeed. So to put these grids through their paces, we need to do a studio shoot. And today I'm joined in the studio by my good friend Ify and he is a grime artist, and today he needs some portfolio pictures with a kind of an urban grimy feel. And that's where grids can really come in because it allows us to control the light even here in a small home studio. Now, before we get the, to the grids, let's have a look at the basic light setup. I've got my key light on a boom arm and it's gonna come straight down from above. We're gonna set up a, a light pattern that looks a little bit like street lighting. It's gonna be that kind of feel. Now, before we put the grid in, let's just take a shot like this and see how it looks. So, Ify, could I ask you just to have a, uh, a seat on the floor for me? Okay. And I'm going to come down to your height as well, and we'll just take a shot. Here we go. Now, as you can see, the light spread from the bare reflector is very good, but it's also pretty wide. And it just gives a very wide shot that is okay, but we can do so much better. So here's the grid, and all I'm gonna do is just pop this grid inside the reflector, and we'll see what a difference that makes. Now, when I pop that in, it's really important to make sure that the, the grid is in there nice and firmly, and that it isn't gonna fall out and hit your model on the head. No, we're absolutely fine. Okay, so let's take the same shot. Here we go. And look at the difference in those two pictures. This one has a much more closed light source. It's really black off to the sides, but really beautifully lit. But have a look at the, the detail on the face. Have a look at those shadows. That light from above is casting some nasty shadows below the eyes and below the chin. So to deal with those shadows, I'm gonna add in a second light source. So let's grab my second light, which is this one right here, here we go. So today we're gonna to use a beauty dish because it's a nice small light modifier that gives some pretty soft lighting. And of course it's on another one of my uh, flashpoint streak lights. So we'll add this into the scene and I've got it on a nice low light stand so we can bring it down to the same height as our model's eye line. And all we're gonna do is just take the same shot but this time with the second light. Okay, here we go. So as you can see, yes, it's thrown in a lot of light, way too uncontrolled as well. It's just gone absolutely everywhere and overpowered the, the nice gridded light from above. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest and your chance to win amazing prizes. So to get more control back on the beauty dish, I'm gonna add in another grid. Yep, the beauty dish comes with its own grid as well, and we can clip this to the front and really control where that little fill light goes. And it's nice and simple to attach. We just come along and it clips very neatly onto the beauty dish. 
OK, so let's take the same shot again. So with the grid on the beauty dish, you can see how I've really controlled the light and just put it exactly where it needs to go, filling in those shadows and sticking with that dramatic feeling picture. OK, so there we are. Our basic lighting setup is complete. Now all we need to do is just to experiment a little bit and actually do a shoot where we change things around ever so slightly, but we get a few different poses from Iffy and we'll get some great shots. And we're going to do that right now. OK, are you ready? OK, let's go for it. So there we go, that was a really good shoot. We got some great pictures at the end of that as well. So all we need to do now is just to get my favorite picture into Photoshop and we'll do a very quick Photoshop edit. And we'll do that right now. Well, perhaps the best bit of that whole lighting setup was the fact that I more or less got it right in camera. I controlled the size of the light, the direction and the strength of the light, which means there shouldn't be too much work inside of Photoshop, but there's always a little bit of fine tuning. Let's have a look. So here's the image exactly as it came off the camera. It's in Adobe Camera Raw, Photoshop CC, and as you can see, it looks fantastic. Yeah, there's a few things we can do. For example, we can get the white balance tool and hope that the white balance is about right, but we can just sample and say, yeah, you know what? I think I nailed the white balance in camera. Brilliant. We can come down to the whites and say, yeah, maybe just a little bit more whites just to, to bring them up because they were a bit lacking on the histogram, but that does warm up the, the highlights a bit too much. So we'll pull the highlights back and they're slightly different to the whites. Really what I want to do though is change clarity because if you've seen me use this background before you know there's a wonderful texture on that background and if I increase the clarity I can pull that out. Now this colour picture is almost black and white. There's very very little areas of colour in it at all. So I'm going to make it even more black and white-ish by reducing the vibrance. And when I bring the vibrance down we'll leave some of the stronger colours behind but mute the rest of the colors. And that really works well for this low key style of image. Now, as far as the main editing goes, that's pretty much it. I'm kind of happy with what we've got. The rest of the editing is gonna be local adjustments. And by that means small areas of the picture rather than global adjustments, which affect the entire raw file. And we can do some of that work in Photoshop and some in Adobe Camera Raw. So for example, let's go in over the face and have a little bit of a look there because increasing the clarity has done wonders on the background, but of course it's also affected if his face. Now I want to pull that back a little bit by getting the adjustment brush. And on the adjustment brush, we'll just reset everything by clicking either the minuses or the pluses, it doesn't matter which, and we'll just reduce the clarity down to about minus 50% because that's roughly where we were when we increased the clarity and we'll paint a little bit less clarity on his face. And that just helps to reduce that kind of contrasty feel that was there before. Whilst I'm here, I can also put a bit of highlight reduction in as well, just to cut down some of the flare and glare from the skin. Okay, so that pretty much puts me where I want to be as far as raw goes. There's one more area that I would like to change, and it's up here at the top where we've just got the little clip that holds in the, the grid, or at least allows you to pull it out easily into the reflector. And I need to remove that because it's a distraction. Now I could do it here in RAW using the spot healing brush, but I prefer to do it in Photoshop. So I'll open up the image. We'll leave Adobe Camera RAW behind. And then all I'm gonna do is just get the spot healing brush. We'll go in nice and close and we'll remove that area, a little bit of healing like so. I'm gonna leave the grid in because I think it adds something to the picture. It kind of gives a purpose for the light, a source for that light. It's also worth a good look just to have a look around up close and yeah, there we go. Working in a small home studio will mean things like the legs of your light stands will sometimes creep into the picture and just need to be removed even in the deep shadows like so. But there you go. In just a few minutes, my picture is complete. 
So there we go, there's our final pictures completed. A great set of images and a great model with Ify here. Now, if you want to see more videos from myself and the other amazing presenters here on Adorama TV, you know what you've got to do? You've got to be clicking on the subscribe button over there. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.